Hi, it's just Lawrence from Materialize Belgium. In this tutorial video, we'll talk about how Magix can automatically nest parts for you and how you can optimize the results of the nesting algorithm. We will also see how to use a cinder box to make sure you don't lose the small parts in a build cake. 3D placement or 3D nesting is used in technologies like laser sintering and multi-jet fusion. For these technologies, the parts do not need support and they can be nested in 3D. As a result, many parts can be built in a single build. Manually nesting many parts is very time-consuming work, but the fully automatic nester of Magix can do it in a few seconds. You just need to go to the Build Preparation ribbon and click on the 3D nester icon. In the pop-up window, you will be able to choose between the Fast and Accurate Geometry Nesting Algorithm, which will take into account your fault geometry, or the even faster Bounding Box Nesting Algorithm, which will take into account the bounding box of your part instead. You can pick your preferred profile, if you have one, or you can set your parameters manually. Here you can define the distance between the part and the distance from the edge of the platform. You can also define stop criteria. You can stop nesting when all the parts are inside the build volume. You can stop nesting when a certain nesting density percentage has been reached. You can choose to manually end the nesting process when you choose to do so. Or you can stop after a given amount of time has been passed. Let's choose 6% nesting density for the purpose of this example. In the general settings section of the 3D nester, you also have the option to assign a higher priority to certain parts, making sure that those parts will be nested. So let's take a look what happens when we click on OK. Throughout the process, you will see how the build height changes and the nesting density goes up over time. You can see in just a few seconds, we were able to reach a nesting density of over 6%. And at the same time, we could even do a test to see whether there were any interlocking parts, which I may show you in another example later on. Let's close this for now and go back to the 3D nester window. Under the nesting settings, you have the option to do redo nesting from a previous platform configuration. You can nest special parts in the center of the platform. You can assign a maximum build height, which could help you save build time. And you can optimize the distribution of your slices to minimize the build risks. For instance, here we could choose to optimize the distribution of our slices across the height and the slice volume. Let's take a look what our current slice distribution looks like before we make any changes. Ideally, in a good build, the surface area to be scanned per layer should be more or less the same. If we take a look here, we can see that there are huge differences in between the surface area between layers, as indicated by the peaks over here. Let's go back to our 3D nester and try to optimize the slice volume and height. After we recalculate our slice distribution, we should see that the surface area on each layer should be closer to each other. If we're able to achieve that result with such a bar distribution, we will be able to say that our build will be healthier than the previous configuration. As you can see, we are now pre processing the parts, and I'm just going to wait a couple of seconds until I can show you the results. At this stage, we have nested all the parts inside the build volume, and we are now trying to optimize the results. For the purpose of the example, I'm going to skip this step, but the longer you keep it running here, the better the result would be. As you can see, as promised, we have another example of the interlocking analysis. Here, as we can see, we have some interlocking parts. So if I go ahead and choose to solve those interlocking parts, you can see in just a few seconds afterwards, we were able to avoid that disaster, not being able to separate the parts from each other after printing. And we now have our final platform configuration. So let's go ahead and take a look at our slide distribution to see whether we were able to improve upon our previous results. As you can see, the peaks are much flatter right now. And this was after only optimizing for a couple of seconds. If we were able to run the nesting algorithm longer, you would see that the result would be even better. Now let's go back to our nesting settings. However, for this example, I'm going to go ahead and navigate to another scene. And I'm going to go back to my build preparation 3D nester menu, but I will be making use of the bounding box nesting instead because 
As you can see, the other option that we had available under the nesting settings was the use of multi-platform placements. I will be showing you with this build instead, enabling our multi-platform placements. We can see we have about 960 parts loaded and I'm going to go ahead and start nesting. So as we can see, we were now able in just one second to nest three different scenes. So we have nested all of these 965 parts. The first one that we have nested, the result we can find over here. And at the same time, we've also generated these other two platform scenes with the remaining parts. So that's everything that we can find under the nesting settings. So for the next step, I'm going to go back to my first build. We'll open the 3D nester once again and we will go to the part settings and take a look at those instead. From the part settings menu, you can define a freedom for rotation and translation of your parts during nesting, which you can do over here. Some of these options will also allow you to specify a specific rotation angle. In principle, the smaller the rotation angle, the higher the nesting efficiency will be. However, if you'd like to specify a different orientation option for different parts, you may also make use of the option Specify per part. If this option is enabled, a list of parts in the platform will pop up before nesting. Here we'll be able to choose a different rotation and uh, translation behavior depending on the parts we select. which will allow you to define specific freedom options for specific parts. For instance, if you have a part which you already placed on the platform before you begin nesting. Let's close this window for now and go back to the 3D nester settings. The final option we have here is that you're also able to start re-nesting above a certain height. For instance, in the case that you need to add parts to a platform that you already started building previously. Finally, in the case that you have small parts that you wouldn't like to lose in the build cake, or if you have fragile parts that you would like to protect, or if you'd like to group all parts from a specific customer together, you may also use the subnester and center box functions. For this example, I'm going to navigate to another scene where I've already taken some parts to the side. I'm going to go ahead and select these parts, and we're going to start by applying a subnest to nest these small parts together, separately from the rest. So in this subnester menu, we're able to define a part interval and a freedom of orientation for these parts. So let's take a look at our subnested parts. There we go. If desired, we can also create a box around these parts. To do so, we will click on the center box wizard. And here we're going to select the box shape through the rectangular selection. We can specify the margins in between the individual parts. We can specify the thickness of the box. We can enable or disable the perforations here. And add a label with the description if we choose to do so. For instance, let's say that these parts are for customer ABC. And if we click on OK, we can finalize our center box. Other options here would allow us to choose for the label to engrave it or extrude it and specify a different font. So there we go. Thank you for watching and please make sure you check our other tutorial videos as well. For further questions about our software, please don't hesitate to contact the support line of your nearest materialized office.